This video is a sample from the Secret Guitar Teacher Interactive course, The Five Main Elements of Music. The Five Main Elements of Music, element number 2, Scales, section 2.7, Using the Major Scale, part 5, Direct Use of the Major Scale, brackets, Graphical Pathway. In the last section, we mentioned that there's no reason not to use the major scales in exactly the same way as we've learned to use the blues scales to improvise. By this, we mean learning to use the patterns made by the fingering of the scales and to some degree becoming less aware of their actual relationship to the scale notes themselves. In effect, we're going to show you how to jump from the analytical pathway where you learn scales on the basis of understanding them to the graphical pathway where you simply learn a set of fingering patterns on the fretboard. If you've learned the major scale patterns by using the caged system and sandwich exercise, you'll probably be playing mainly within discrete octaves. So if you were to jam over a backing track, say in D major, you might sound something like this. is that I'm conceptualising the scale mainly in discrete octaves. This is, in fact, part of the point of learning them using the sandwich exercises. And it's a perfectly good approach to getting into improvising, especially in a melodic style. But the interesting thing about playing lead guitar is that the way you conceptualize the scale patterns on the fretboard affects your choices of notes and phrases. Let's take a close-up look at the E-shape pattern for the D major scale. section 2.5 on how to learn the major scale, we learn to see this as two complete octaves plus one remnant note here at fret 12 on the top string and one here at fret 9 on the 6th string. Now let's reframe it purely as a set of fingering patterns. For example, we can finger 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4 on this bottom pair of strings. Here are a few ways I might work that pattern using hammer-ons and pull-offs, slides, etc. to make phrases and licks. the next 
next pair of strings, the fingering switches to 1, 3, 4 on both strings. And this opens up some slightly different ideas. top pair of strings we have two four one two four and I find I'm inclined to use this note here at fret 9 as a pivot anchoring this finger and working the rest of the notes around it like this I also like working with this little diagonal of three notes in a row on three different strings. So what I'm doing here is working out a number of ways to work this scale based purely on the physical juxtaposition of the notes on the guitar fretboard with total disregard for the actual names of the notes or the interval patterns they represent relative to the key scale. Now I test out these physical pattern based ideas against the backing track and use my ears to work them in over the chord changes. to the D shape pattern for the major scale. Let's stay in the key of D. After a bit of exploration, I discover I've got the same pair of patterns as I had down here, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, but on the top, four strings. So I can start to take advantage of these repeating patterns, blending the two positions together to, I think, lend quite a nice rhythmic texture to the phrasing here. So maybe we can do stuff like... C shape, I'd probably drop back down to the lower end of the fretboard. <clears throat> and suddenly our two familiar patterns are separated from one another. Um, we've got one three four, one three four on the A and D string, but then only two notes on the G string before we come to one, two, four on the top two strings. Now I don't know why, but I do find this arrangement does help with sort of smooth out descending runs in this position. So we can perhaps put that to good use. 
For the A shape, our familiar patterns are disrupted slightly by the tuning anomaly. So we've got the one, two, four, one, two, four here, but then the one, three, four has to stagger up to that position there. So again, I'm not sure why, but I find this position seems to favour ascending runs more than descending ones. Feels easier than going. Finally, for the G shape, the familiar fingering pattern of one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four gets doubly disrupted uh, by it being both separated and disturbed by the tuning anomaly. For that reason, I tend to let go of it as a concept in this position. But luckily, this position is very familiar to me for a completely different reason. One that will become clear over the next couple of sections of the course. If you want to enjoy a versatile style of lead guitar playing, then it's my belief that developing different ways of conceptualising these scale notes on the fretboard will help you do that. Hopefully we've just shown in this lesson how basing your playing on the fingering patterns produces a different set of results to basing your playing on the discrete octave patterns. If you enjoyed this video please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd really like to maximise your potential as a guitar player, click on the link in the description below to the Secret Guitar Teacher site. Here, you can sign up for a 30-day trial, free of charge and without obligation. We won't even ask you for your credit card number. <laughs>